Andy, did you hear that? Come on. Did I hear what? That whistle. That's the Rinso White whistle. And Rinso means us. That's right. Rinso gets clothes Rinso White. Rinso presents the Amos and Andy Show. <laughs> Rinso for a wash that's... Rinso white? Rinso for a wash that's... Rinso white? Yes, a Rinso white, Rinso bright wash. It can't be beat. Soapy rich Rinso suds get out stubborn dirt fast. Put Rinso to work for you in your tub or washer and judge for yourself how much easier wash day can be, how much better your clothes will look. And important for you to remember these wartime days... Rinso is easy on your clothes, safe for your washable colors. Next wash day, remember. Rinso white. Rinso white. Rinso for a wash that's Rinso white, Rinso bright. And now our stars, Amos and Andy. Usually we listen to Andy get into trouble. But this time we find him already in it. In order to impress a girl, Andy asked her to fill out his income tax blank and listed his income as $7,000 for 1944. Andy didn't know that she worked for the Income Tax Bureau, and she filed the return. At the moment, Andy's in his office telling the details to Amos. So the way things stand now, Amos, according to the tax return that done got filed by mistake... The government thinks that I earned $7,000 last year. Yeah, that's a lot of money, Andy. Yeah, but that ain't the worst. On that income, I now owe the government $1,200 income tax. Mm. $1,200 income tax when all you really made last year was $250. Yeah, that's right. In other words, you owe them five times as much as you earn. Mm. And that's certainly more than the government expects anybody to pay. Yeah, but from what I hear about it, it ain't much more. <laughs> Well, you ain't got $1,200. What is you going to do? Well, I don't know, Amos. I was thinking I might write Mr. Morgenthau a letter and see how he'd feel about putting me on an easy payment plan. $1,200 or 10 cents a week. Oh, Andy, the government can't do nothing like that. They got certain income tax rules that everybody got to follow. Mm -hmm. After all, with millions of people paying taxes, the government has got to work like a machine. Oh, they work like a machine, all right. A vacuum cleaner. <laughs> I was really in a mess. I really is, you know it. Oh, this is serious, Andy. Amos, there's only one thing for me to do. I, I'm going over and see my lawyer, Gabby Gibson, and find out how much trouble I was really in. Yeah, well, keep your chin up, son. Yeah, well, that's great. Keep my chin up. If I was in the trouble I think I was in, they're going to send me to prison. To Sing Sing or Leavenworth or Brookville. Andy, Brookville's a woman's prison. I still wouldn't like it. <laughs> Look, Gabby, you as my lawyer, I was in a mess of trouble, and I want you to help me out of it. Oh, sure, I'll have your case, Andy. I'll have your case, no matter who you're in trouble with. I ain't scared of nobody. No, indeed, I ain't scared of nobody. Oh, well, that's good, Gabby. Oh, yes, indeed, I got courage. I got courage. I'm uh, glad to hear that. Oh, yes, indeed. I, oh, I'm brave. Nothing frightens me. Yeah, well, my trouble is with the federal government. Uh, shake hands with a coward. <laughs> Gabby, you mean you was afraid to handle a case against the federal government? Yes, I is, Andy. Yes, I is. I sure is. You see, when you mess around with the federal government, it gets so alcatraz mm. <laughs> Well, look here, Gabby. Before you give up, let me explain the thing to you. <sighs> By mistake, a wrong income tax return done got sent to the government <laughs> saying that I done made $7,000 last year and I owes a tax of $1,200. When all I made was $250. Now, wait a minute. Let me get the facts straight. The $250 you made, you didn't list. And now you've got to pay $1,200 that you ain't got on $7,000 you never made. Yeah. You think I can beat the case, Gabby? You might on one grounds. One grounds. What's that? Sheer confusion. <laughs> but my own personal opinion is, Andy, they got you. Oh, yes, indeed. You're in trouble. Yes, indeed. It. But look, Gabby, please. Now, think. Ain't there no legal angle that applies to this thing? Well, maybe it is, maybe it is. Let me think a second. Yes, Andy, there is something. There definitely is. This all comes under the federal housing bill. The federal housing bill. The federal housing bill? How do you figure that? If you don't pay that bill for $1,200, the federal government going to take care of your housing. That's federal housing bill of five years. <laughs> Oh, 
me. Gabby, you really think they're going to send me to prison? Oh, no doubt about it, Andy. No doubt about it. They're going to fence you in. <laughs> Listen, Gabby, as my friend, you've got to help me. Can't you at least tell me what I can do? Well, Andy, in the legal profession, when everything else fails, there's one highly technical legal move that the client can resort to. Highly technical. Eh, what's that? Get out of town. <laughs> Go someplace, Andy. Change your name. Get yourself lost. Just go far away. Go someplace. Yeah, but what place do you think I ought to go? I tell you what place you should go. I tell you what place, Andy. Just start traveling. Keep traveling. And keep messing the desk <laughs> that you is from New York. Yes, indeed. You is from New York. Yeah. When you meet somebody that say, where's that? That's the place. That's the place. <laughs> Well, then, I've given it to you straight from the shoulder. Me and the Lodge Brothers is going to help you get train fare out of town. Lightning is taking up a collection now. Yeah, well, that's all I want to do, Kingfish, get out of town. Yeah, the reason we're doing it is because we don't want nobody around here that broke the federal law. We don't want your name associated no longer with our Lodge. Yeah, I know, Kingfish. I know I as outcast. But don't worry. The name Andrew H. Brown ain't never going to bother nobody no more. Because I don't like Gabby say. I don't change my name. I even got cards printed up with my new name on them. Yeah, that's a good idea, you know. And here's one of the cards right here. See how this sounds. Yeah, let's hear it. John Lucas, formerly Andrew H. Brown. <laughs> and uh, how can you be that dumb, formerly Andrew H. Brown, printed right on the card? That's a dead giveaway. It is, huh? Yeah, give me that card. I'll change the thing so ain't nobody gonna know who you really are. Yeah. Let me get my pencil here. Mm. Yeah. Uh, that do it. How do it read now? John Lucas, no connection with Andrew H. Brown. <laughs> yeah, boy, that's a lot better. Now, let's get back to this map here and see where I'm going to go when I leave this town. Mm-hmm. I want to go someplace where the FBI's ain't going to come after me. Yeah, well, let's see the map here. And uh, I think I got just a place here. Yeah, here it is right here, Death Valley. Death Valley? Yeah, nothing grows there. There's no water, no nothing. The FBI's would never dream of looking for you there, because... They know that nobody can stay alive in Death Valley. Well, wait a minute, yeah. Then how does I stay alive there? Well, Andy, you can't have everything, you know. You <laughs> Listen, Kingfisher, don't hit me. There must be some place in the Midwest. Uh, where... Oh, uh, Lightning, uh, come on in with the collection. Hello, Lightning. Uh, Kingfish, I don't pass around the hat like you told me. Good, Lightning. Let me look in the hat and see how much you got there so we can see how far Andy can go, whether it's just the Middle West or clean out to California. Yeah, see what's in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's the news, Kingfish? And uh, how would you feel about hiding out in Brooklyn? <laughs> Let's go back to the Lodge Hall now and hear the Mystic Knights of the Sea Quartet singing Dinah. Oh, Dinah, is there anyone finer in the state of Carolina? If there isn't, you know her, well, surely me, Dinah. With the Dixie eyes blazing, how I'd love to sit and gaze in to the eyes of Dinah Lee. Every night, why do I shake with fright? Because my dynamite change your mind about me. Oh, Dana, if she wanted to China, I would hop an ocean liner just to be with Dana Lee. Every night, why do I shake with my cause? My dynamite girl might change her mind about me. Oh, if she took a trip to China, I would hop an ocean liner. There is nothing here that's finer than my dynamite. Because, because, because my dynamite 
I change a man about me, oh, well, she's my gal, Dinah. There's no one finer, oh, 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 I take a trip to China. Just to be with Dinah, just to be with Dinah. Just to be with Dinah. Kingfish, is you alone? And what you doing coming around here? We don't want you around the lodge no more. Uh, what you mean? We done kicked you out of the lodge. We got a reputation to uphold and you done smudged it up. Therefore, I had to move that we move you out. Hmm. You done kicked me out of the lodge, huh? Right, so scram out of here. Goodbye. So long. Adios and all reservoir and all that stuff. <laughs> That's a fine attitude for a friend. Look, Kingfish, after the Lodge Brothers didn't come through, I went to all my friends. And I still couldn't get no money to get out of town on. Can't you hide me out for a few weeks? Sorry, Anna, sorry. Can't help you. If I done that, it would make me accessory after the fact. Uh, make you what, you say? Accessory after the fact. Explain that to me. Explain it to you? Yeah. Well, uh, accessory uh, after the fact, uh, accessory is, uh, uh, well, uh... You know what the Cessna's is on automobile, don't you? The fancy radiator cap with the foxtail hanging down. The, the, the fog lights. The, and the horn. Yeah, now there's a horn. Now there's one right there. Yeah, well, what is you getting at? I'm trying to explain it to you. If you was driving an automobile and you hit somebody and then blows your horn, that would make the horn the Cessna after the fact. Now, there you go. In other words, uh... In other words, if you helped me, you'd be like a horn? Yeah, that's it, that's it. I don't see how that fits the situation. You don't, huh? No. Of course, you was ignorant. That's why you don't know. Well, explain it to me. How do it fit? Well, uh, uh, you in trouble with the government, ain't you? Yeah. And you asked me to horn in. That's how it fit, yeah. <laughs> oh, I tell you, Andy, I can't help you. My advice to you is to give yourself up to the police. Oh, no. If I do that, you're liable to put me in jail for 20 years. Couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Uh, well, goodbye, Andy, and a happy stretch to you. Oh, listen, Kingfish, listen. There's only one thing for me to do. Hitchhike out of town and get as far away as I can. And I don't come to the conclusion that leaving town ain't gonna do you no good neither. Ain't I? You'll be a fugitive. Yeah, they'll put your picture up on every wall of every post office in the country. Oh, I tell you, Andy, you'll be the pin-up boy of the year. <laughs> yeah, they're really gonna hang my picture up all over, huh, Kingfish? Yeah, and. There's going to be a lot of printing around it, too. Yes, uh, what's it going to say? I wish you hadn't asked me that, Anna. No. <laughs> on top of the picture, it's going to say one word. Hmm? Wanted. And on the bottom, this is the hard part, Anna. Yeah. It's going to say, dead or alive. <laughs> oh, me, dead or alive. That's right, dead or alive. Does I get a choice? <laughs> I fed you in, son, but let's go on with the printing on the picture. Then there's all going to be some stuff printed on there about reward of $500 to anyone who knows your whereabouts leading to your capture. Oh, and by the way, Andy, you're going to drop me a line now and then with a return address on it, ain't you? No. You trust me, don't you? Not $500 worth, I don't. <laughs> Listen, Kingfish, I'm going to tell you something. Even if they does hang my picture up and offers a reward, they ain't never going to catch me. I'm going south. They got a lot of swamps down there where I can hide out forever. Yeah, swamps ain't going to do you no good. The police got bloodhounds. They sniff you out there in no time. Well, then I'll get on a boat somewhere. Yeah, the police got boats. They'll pick you up there, too. Well, I better leave the country. That won't help you none. They'll drag you back. You know I have more trouble with you than I is with the police. <laughs> yeah, well, I ain't trying to scare you, Andy, but when that FBI spread out that net, you really going to see some fishing. I is, huh? Oh, yeah. In fact, I see it in the paper just yesterday. Where the FBI solved 200 cases this week and had seven clues left over. That's what they done. Well, Kingfish, I guess there just ain't no way out of this for me. Oh, me. Why did I have to go and pretend that I was a big businessman to that gal? Yeah, well, it's your own fault, Andy. You don't see me pretending I was a big businessman. I ain't working, and I don't make no bones about it. I was free as a bird. No business worries to worry about, uh... Excuse me, man. Uh, hello, uh, Kingfish speaking. Hello, Kingfish. This is Henry Van Porter. 
Say, you know that trouble Andy's in? No. Yeah. I just checked with my company lawyer, and I find out that Andy ain't got nothing to worry about. If he files a tax return on $7,000 by mistake, instead of his true income of $250, he don't have to pay $1,200 tax. Oh. The company lawyers say that any man to do that just has to go down to the income tax office and tell him that it was a mistake. They'll give him his return back, and he can file a new one. Or he can have his auditor, if he's got one, go down there and do it for him. Of course, that would cost a fee. Yeah. Well, that's all there is to it. Will you give Andy all these facts when you see him? Uh, yeah, okay. What was that, Kingface? Wrong number. <laughs> that was the longest wrong number I don't ever hear. Well, then, if you'll excuse me now, I've got some work to do. You know, when you was running a business like I is, you can't neglect a thing. Running a business? You just got through telling me that you wasn't in business. Ain't I told you about my new business? No. What business you in? And I was happy to tell you that I was an order to specialize in correcting false income tax returns in the $7,000 bracket. You mean like mine? Oh, that is right. You did have one like that, didn't you? Yeah, Colleen forgot about it. You know, Andy, I could fix that up for you. Oh, boy, that'd be great. Yeah, I'd be glad to handle a thing for you for $10. $10? Yeah, well, Andy, uh, you know I was a CPA, and that means certified paid accountant. <laughs> uh, us CPAs ain't allowed to do nothing for nothing. That's the OPAs, WPA on the CPAs. Can't mess around with them ears. Look, uh, $10. Uh, well, if you fix that up for me, Kingfish, I wouldn't have to leave town or go to jail or nothing. Yeah, for 10 bucks, I guarantee you that I straightened it up. I guarantee it for you, ain't I? Mm. You know, you, you never went to the income tax, uh, uh, the, the, the thing right there. And I'll tell you one other thing. What? You don't want them men investigating your past year. That's one thing you got to watch out for. Yeah, that's right. Well, listen, Kingfish, wait here. I'll go right over to Shorty's Barbershop and borrow 10 bucks. Don't go away. <laughs> A rinse whitewash. With ease. A rinse brightwash. With safety. Is it any wonder that women here, there, everywhere are singing? <whistles> rinse so white. For a wash that's white as it can be. Rinse so bright. B R I G H T. Yes, rinse so keeps your colors bright. It's all for dirt for a wash so white. Here's great advice you can't go wrong. Rinse so white. Rinse so bright. Happy little wash, great song. Plenty of reason to be happy on wash day with Rinso's soapy rich suds on the job. No hard scrubbing or boiling, just a short soaking with Rinso, a few quick finger rubs on extra soil places, and clothes are ready to rinse. And Rinso's anti sneeze. Right. Rinso's the only soap made by patented anti sneeze process. The only granulated soap that's 98% free of sneezy soap dust. So, next wash day, remember, a Rinso white wash... With ease. A Rinso bright wash... With safety.
Shorty, the reason I dropped over here to your barber shop is to ask a favor of you. Uh, a, a, a favor, Andy? Uh. What, 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 what is it? Well, uh, before I pops it on you, first I want to ask you a question. Uh, Shorty, which means the most to you, friendship or money? Now, think that over. Friendship or money? Oh, that there's nothing more important than a friend. Uh, a, a friend is the dearest thing that, that, that a man can... A, a, a true friend means more than a... To, to have a friend is, is the finest thing. Money. <laughs> mm. That was the wrong question. Look, Shorty, let me lead up to it another way. Mm. If a starving little dog come up to you, would you give him a piece of meat, wouldn't you? Yeah, if, if he had red points with him. <laughs> yeah, well, I ain't no dog. I as a human being and a friend of yours. I was in a mess of trouble, and I needs $10 to get myself out of it. Will you lend it to me? Oh, gee, Andy, that's, that's a lot of money. I, I'm afraid I can't do it. Oh, but Shorty, you gotta. I was in awful income tax trouble, and if I don't get $10, I might go to jail. You won't see me again in 20 years. Oh, I, I, I wouldn't think of letting you go to jail. I, I, I'd do anything to stop that. I, I couldn't stand for you being locked up. Uh, tw- tw- 20 years is too long a time for a, ma- for a man to... I'm going to miss you. <laughs> Listen, Shorty. Shorty, you just got to lend me the money. Now, look, uh, ain't you ever been broke and needed money something awful? You must know how it feel. Oh, sure, I guess. I, I remember once I was so broke, I, I didn't eat for nine days. I got so doggone hungry, I finally bought my brown and white sports shoes and ate them. You ate your brown and white sports shoes? That must have been awful, Shorty. Well, the brown part was kind of tough, but the white meat was tender. <laughs> well, there you is, Shorty. Now, you know what it is to need money bad. So lend me the $10. I'll even give you an IOU for it. Oh, but them IOUs is no good, Andy. You, you never members to pay them. Uh... Well, uh, I'll tell you the reason I don't remember, Shorty. Mm. When I gives you I.O.U., you was the only one that's got something to remind you that I owes the money. Mm. But me, I ain't got nothing to remind me. Uh, yeah, you you was right, Andy. How, how could we fix that? Well, let me see. Uh, I know, I know. This time, when you lends me money, instead of me giving you I.O.U., you gives me one to remind me that I owes you the money. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's great, Andy. Yeah. Why, 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 why didn't I think of that? Uh, I, I'll, I'll, write the, I'll write the IOU out for you right now. I got my pencil right here. Oh, that's great, Shorty. That's great. Well, there it is, Andy. Here's your, here's your IOU and the $10. Yeah, well, thanks a million, Shorty. Thank you. See you later. Yeah, bye, Andy. Well, this time I've got to get paid with Andy having the IOU. I'm certainly smart over that. I, 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 I'm the shrewdest fellow that ever lived. They, they, they don't come no sharper than me. Nobody pulls the wool over my... I've been robbed. <laughs> oh, I tell you, Amos, I'm nervous as a cat. I can't wait till the kingfish get back from that income tax office. Yeah, well, calm down now, Andy. Worrying yourself sick ain't gonna help you none. Well, how can I calm down? Amos, did you realize that if the kingfish don't get me out of this mess, I'll be able to go to jail for the rest of my natural life, and even longer? Yeah, uh, what I don't understand is the kingfish handling this whole thing for you. Uh, how did that happen? Well, we were sitting in the lodge office, and I remember he got a telephone call that it was the wrong number. And right after that, he remembered that he was a great auditor. Yeah, tell you the truth, Van, uh, I don't think that he's going to be able to do nothing for you down there at the income tax office. Mm, well, I just hope... Wait a minute. Well, boys, here I is. The great order to George Kingfish Stevens. Oh, Kingfish, you was back. Yeah, what happened, Kingfish? Yeah, I can't wait. Is I under clear? Andy, uh, it's all fixed. You ain't got to pay the $1,200, and you ain't got to go to jail. Mm. Yeah, I got the income tax returned back, and your worries is over. Here you will. Oh, good. Oh, King's Feast, I got to hand it to you. I never thought you could do it. Oh, yeah, I feel like a new man. Uh, now, say, Kingfish, you ain't got me in no trouble down there, is you? You told them the truth. And uh, I told them it was impossible for you to have $7,000 a year income. Hmm. Yeah, I told them that you couldn't make that kind of a money because you was nothing but a, a dumb, ignorant, lazy bum. Uh, well, I'm glad that you ain't had a lie about me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I admit that you straightened it out, Kingfish, but you charged Andy $10 for doing it, huh? 
Well, Amos, uh, does you mean it ain't worth $10 for a man with the skill, training, and experience of a certified public accountant to go down and keep Ann out of jail? Yeah, but you ain't had that kind of skill, training, and experience. Yeah, that's just the point. Without that stuff, it was even harder. Yeah, well, I am so happy. I don't care about the $10, Amos. King Fear, you must have made a big imprint on him down there to swing that thing so fast. Oh, yeah. I, I told him right off the bat that I was Harlem's biggest auditor. Yeah. Told him that I handled 50 or 60, $100,000 accounts around town. Told him that I've been handling them for years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, did they believe you? Believe me? Who's they believe me? Yeah. Why, you suddenly laid it on, King Fear. Oh, yeah. When I left there, they knew it for sure that I was Harlem's number one auditor. Oh, I tell you, Andy. With me in back of it, you ain't got nothing to be afraid of, and I'll stick with you two right through thick and thin. Uh, Wait a minute. Uh, what you want, Lighton? Uh, there's a man from the income tax department out here. Hmm. Uh, and uh, here's your ten dollars back. Uh, uh, I don't know you. Never saw you before. Uh, you can't do that, Mr. Kingfish. You can't. I, I was in trouble, and you got you still my auditor. Uh, yeah, I, I, I just remember, Andy. I ain't an auditor no more. I done quit the business. Uh, as soon as there's any trouble, you can always count on the Kingfish pulling out. Yeah, uh, listen, Kingfish, I. Uh, uh oh, wait a minute. Good afternoon. My name is Emerson with the Internal Revenue Department. Uh, yeah, so yeah, well, well uh, there's the man you want to see right there, Mr. I is George Kingfish Stevens. Uh, the man you want there is Andrew H. Brown, the one sitting there with a criminal look on his face. There. Uh, 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 look, uh, uh, m- 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 Mr. Emerson, I can explain everything. Yes, yeah, so if you just give him a chance. I'm not interested. Yeah, I realize, Mr. Emerson, that everything I say to prove Brown's innocence, yeah, ain't gonna fool you none. So I'll just kind of get out here and give you plenty of room to slip the handcuffs on. Uh, just a minute, Stevens. Don't leave. Uh, yeah. Since you were down at the income tax headquarters, we've been talking things over. Yeah, if you're such a big auditor, Stevens, why haven't you filed an income tax for the last five years? You better come along with me. <laughs> Amos and Andy will be back in just a moment. I'd just like to remind you that there's a difference between a whitewash and a wash that's rinse all white. And there's a big difference between a bright wash and a wash that's rinse all bright. You'll see that difference yourself. First time you hang a rinse all wash on your line. Yes, and you'll feel different, too, when you see how much easier wash day is when you have rinse all to help you. Rinse all's grand for dishwashing and all the soap and water jobs around the house. So why not try it? Once you do, I'm betting you'll never be satisfied with anything less. And now, here are Amos and Andy. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, never in the history of the world has there been a more sincere, honest, deserving cause than your Red Cross. Won't you please help them? The Red Cross is truly the angel of mercy to every fighting man the world over. Help them, folks. They need it. Thank you, and good night. Good night. Be sure to be with us next Friday evening at this same time when the makers of Rinso will again present the Emerson and Andy Show. Next week, the Kingfish opens a lecture bureau and launches Andy on a hectic career as a lecturer, so don't miss the fun. This program is broadcast to our armed forces all over the world. This is Harlow Wilcox saying good night to all of you from all of us. Ladies, there's one war job that you and only you can do. I mean the saving of waste fats and oils. Every drop of used fat is vitally needed for military medicines and supplies, and for supplies on the home front, such as fabrics, paints, and soaps. That fat has to come from your kitchen. Don't fall down on your war job. Save all used fats in a clean can, and the minute the can is full, take it right down to your butcher. He'll pay you four cents plus two red ration points for every pound you turn in. Say, try Life Boy in your next tub or shower. You'll go for that swell Life Boy lather. It's mild, efficient, and refreshing. But Life Boy's more than a great bath soap. It's the soap that's made especially to give all-over lasting protection against B.O. 
Don't take chances. Use Life Boy. It's the only soap that's especially made to stop... This is the National Broadcasting Company.